Hello, good morning or good afternoon. Y'all better not be watching this in the middle of the night, unless unless you're watching the replay, in which case you can watch this whenever you want. I'm not the boss of you. Uh, today is only the second day of the free web development boot camp that Ramon and I are doing. And we're going to be going through the free code camp responsive web design certification. Yeah. If you are watching this live in the middle of the night, we'll, the video will be around. You don't have to. Uh, but we intentionally alternate the time slot. So this one's really, really good for, hopefully really good for folks in the APAC regions. But if you're in Europe like myself, or if you're in, in the Americas, it's kind of a weird time. The next time we do the web dev boot camp, we'll swap them around. But, and I'm hoping this all goes very mellow because I've got a maximum number of weird cats sleeping behind me. So let's see if we can do this quietly and calmly enough where we don't have cats screaming. I've come into the responsive web design curriculum and we're going to scroll down nice and fast. HTML by building a cat photo app. Y'all did that with Ramon yesterday. And hopefully you talked about how HTML is just, just a series, a system for putting rectangles on a page and putting stuff in the rectangles usually. But I promise we're going to keep coming back to this idea again and again. HTML is all rectangles. Today, we're going to do some HTML to review, but we're going to go a little bit fast um, because what I really want to start to talk about is CSS. And CSS means cascading style sheets. So cascading like a waterfall. I always think this is beautiful. And that means that the rules in which they're applied cascade throughout sort of a, a tiered approach. And that, you don't believe me about the rectangles yet, and you don't believe me about the cascading yet, but we're going to get there. So we're going to build this, a camper cafe. Oh, gosh, do any of you lovelies enjoy camping? I uh, personally uh, prefer someplace with showers. Mm -hmm. So we're going to build this cafe, which looks like it might be for campers. And I think we've, I can see a lot of HTML elements. I see some text. I see a background image, which we haven't learned about yet, I don't think. I bet this is an H1. But we're going to start coding. <gasps> so... The first thing we've got to do is we've got to tell the browser, our user's browser, our visitor's browser, what type of document is being served. We're just going to write doc type, HTML. The best thing about typing where other people can see you is the tendency to forget stuff. We do that, and now we're going to start an HTML element. Generally, when we start an element, we need to end it. Shouldn't be indented, should it? And here and here, this has been ages since I wrote HTML, so y'all are going to have to fuss at me when I get stuff wrong. But here, I think what's going on is, oh, hello, lovelies. Good morning. Good evening. Um, ba -bum. Just tiny little songs to myself. Very normal first thing in the morning. Here we're going to set the lang attribute is equal to English. It's been a while since I wrote some HTML, but this feels like it might pass. <gasps> Our tests pass. Everything's fine. Everything's going to, it would be fine even if they didn't. So we're going to start a head element. And let's go ahead and end our head element. Close it right there, just, just, to keep, whoop, just to keep on top of things. And inside this head element, we're going to make a title element. I really like that this has sort of indented this. And it indents us both so, really, I think we, we indent stuff. We move it over with a space or two to make it more human readable, to make it easier for other people. Like sometimes some of the things we do are for computers when we use semantic structuring. But here, I think the indentation is mostly for people. So we've got a title element. Our title is text. So inside these two tags, we're going to say cafe menu. Code, everything's fine. So the title is one of several elements that provide extra information that's not visible on the web page 
but it sort of is. So if you're watching on YouTube, if you look all the way on the top of your browser window, um, what does it say? Right above the URL bar, it should say something like, um, let's learn CSS or YouTube, let's learn. And if you're on Twitch, it'll say, do the same thing. So the, that's set by setting the title. We're also going to use a meta element, which is not going to be visible, but it's going to tell search engines and other machines. Machine sounds menacing. Oh, meta elements are self-closing. Oh, Mitch says, it says, let's learn CSS by building a cafe menu. Amazing. That means that's the title of the web page you're on. I think maybe YouTube is a web app because you've got a little bit more functionality than a page, but we'll definitely talk more about that later. So we've made a meta tag. It's self-closing, so we don't have to do, we don't have to do a closing tag. And here we're going to set the care set to equal to UTF-8. You might be thinking, what, 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 what? Cool. So this is one of the cool, weird things about building a website or encoding on the web. And we're saying, hey, the characters we're going to use on this page are encoded using the UTF-8 encoding. And that's almost always going to be the case when you're writing with almost all modern human language. Modern? Yeah. I think there's a lot of ancient languages that haven't been UTF-8ed. But UTF-8 isn't perfect. It doesn't encapsulate the entirety of human script. It should. We should really keep up with that. But almost all languages these days that you're going to be writing in, in the web for, are going to be UTF-8. Check your code. Let me get actually a link to UTF-8. Because um, this is really fun if you are a big nerd, I say as a big nerd. Um, and QTF-8 is a standard. And with our optional guest session yesterday with, with Bruce, we, we heard a little bit about standards on the web. And UTF-8 is a standard for encoding characters, like letters or numbers. Here we're going to create a body element. And very rationally, a body goes under the head. Okay. Created a body element. Oh, that's it. We're just going to make a blank rectangle. And so far, our, our page doesn't have much on it at all. Oh, we're 4% complete. Let's hustle on. And within the body element, we're going to add a main. And this is still not going to show anything. This is still the semantic structure. We're building out these right now invisible and one could argue imaginary, conceptual rectangles that we're going to be putting our content in. And as you get more and more comfortable with HTML, these boxes are going to feel more and more like little homes. H1. So this is going to be the most important, the primary heading on your page. And generally, you want to have only one of these per page. These are in descending order. So they're sort of um, an H1 can have an H2 under it. An H2 can have an H3. Or, or multiple H3s under it. Uh, but you're mostly going to want to descend those down like a tree. Um, oh, do you want to say camper, cafe, and cats? Finally, we've got our first element going into one of our imaginary boxes, our invisible boxes. That worked just fine. And then we're going to add P element. And a P stands for paragraph, doesn't it? I don't feel too confident. And then we're going to say established, yes, T, 2022. Yes, strange cafe started in 2022. All right. So we're going to create two sections. And sections are another type of empty box, empty rectangle. And these carry the semantic meaning. When your browser comes and scan this, it says, hey, there's multiple sections on these page. I know what these rectangles are. And because the happiest programmers are lazy programmers, I'm going to copy and paste this. Okay. So we've got one section for coffees and what, oh, I'm going to cheat. One thing we could do to add even more semantic um, information is say class or ID of coffees. But we'll learn about that in a second. We'll learn about that in a second. 
Sorry, I'm, I'm just hopping around. I'm so excited to do some CSS. Let's create an H2 element inside this section because that's the child of the H1 sort of in, not uh, conceptually, not actually within a hierarchy. H2, call this coffee, not coffees. All right. And you see that this is a sort of by default style. This is a little bit smaller, a little bit less aggressive than the H1, but we can change that using CSS later. Okay, up until now we've been limited. Now we're gonna add a style element to the head element. And we're only gonna do this once or twice like this. This isn't usually how we're gonna be doing this. So style, do you think, I don't know if it's self-closing. Oh, it might be, it might not be. Whenever you add something and everything goes away, it's maybe a good sign that it's not self-closing. Add a style on it. It hasn't said to do anything with it yet. Do you think that'll work? That'll work. So, ah, everything's Joe. The free code camp is always free and the boot camp is always free, but free code camp is a registered nonprofit there. So if you feel like donating, it's a really solid thing to do. I donate on my other account, I promise. So we can add style to an element by specifying it inside our style element. And this is kind of cheating because I'm teaching you a way to do this that we're not usually going to use. This is very old fashioned, but we're going to start like this. And then what we're going to do is usually your CSS will live in a separate file. But here we've got a different syntax. CSS looks completely different. We've got our little curly braces. This is, so I think we're just gonna copy the syntax, but here the element should be H1. Okay, we're gonna say H1 and then our curly babies. And then our property that we're gonna use is the text align property. And then we're going to value the center. Those of you also joining from the UK or Ireland or Canada, Canada might be a bit miffed with center being spelled the American that way. Almost everything will be American spelling. Hey, that's fine. That worked. And why it works is going to make more and more sense as we go. Yeah. Everything is easy, nothing. Well, it's not easy, but none of this can hurt us. Every, yeah, this is, the whole world is stressful and weird. And this is just programming. So in a previous step, we use a type selector. And let's talk about this for a second. A type selector is a type of element. Okay, okay, okay. So if I had multiple H2s. Oh, so we're gonna center the H2 and P by creating new type selectors. So this is selecting all of every type of an element. Okay, and later I think we're gonna learn a couple of different ways. Catfish is picking on me because do you know what? I tend to call the curly braces, uh, which is the proper business-like way to do this. I tend to call them curly babies and then pointy babies for the carrots um, and you, while I hope it is as fun for you as me, it's really teaching y'all bad habits. I'm just being mean. So here we're going to do the exact same thing. And we're going to center these again, which kind of seems re repetitive, doesn't it? Let's copy and paste it. Ha ha ha. Oh, that really did some things to our, our, our alignment. And you see me refussing these. And I'm refussing these not because... The computer needs them refussed, but because I, as a, as a human, like to see these laid out. Do, 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 where are we? So we've said, we've already done this for H1. Uh -huh. That's the way. And hmm, I have not aligned this properly at all. And if, if you joined us on Monday where we got VS Code, VS Code does this magically for you. It's a gift. Um, if you weren't here with us, not a problem. So we want to change this to H2. Okay. 
And as soon as we did that, we saw it push. So, hey, I see that you want to apply the text align property and the value of center to your H2. Well, here, we've got two H1s doing the same thing. Why is it only doing it once? And the reason it's only doing it is what is it's not. It is really doing this twice. Here it says H1. So your CSS is read from the top down. Okay, okay, okay. And it starts at the top and it says, hey, the H1, I want to align that to the center. And it does it. I say, okay. And it goes down and it says the H2, I want to align it to the center. And it comes down and it says the H1, I want to align it to the center. But it's already there. So it doesn't visually move again. We're going to get our P element. And what do we think it's going to do? I think we're just going to push it right to the center. I'm going to stop doing that pop sound into the mic. It might be learner abuse. It's very annoying. We got a green stripe here. We're going to go ahead and keep going. Everything is fine. Nothing is wrong. So this is exactly what we just, you were just thinking, right? Say, hey, we've got three type selectors and they all do the same thing. I can copy and paste it, but that's kind of repetitive. We can also add multiple selectors on the same line. So now we're going to get rid of these three and we're just going to do the same thing a different way. We're going super fast, but none of this can hurt you. You can always look this up. And as soon as we add, do you know what, just, just for, for my sake, I'm going to go biggest to smallest elements. Um, you can always come back and watch the video. You can always look this up, or I really like to look at these on MDN as well. We've got a green stripe. Everything's fine. So I've just showed you two ways, <laughs> four ways, two ways to do the same thing. We could have the same CSS selector three times, or we could do all three of them on in one selector separated by commas. What we did last time where we had our CSS written inside styles tags in our HTML file. It's a very old fashioned way to do it. It's called inline CSS. And we're almost never going to do that in the real world. Now, what we have is two files. So here we've got our HTML file. Boom, boom, and here we've got our CSS file. I'm going to ask my beautiful colleague, um, Ramon, would it be possible to have you grab the video from um, Monday night where we looked at um, VS Code? Because what we did on our optional partner stream is we looked at a text editor and we made files. And, and I just want to see a different way to conceptually look at those files if it's not a bother. Oh, gosh, Learner. Learner's also saying, hey, is it also inline style when you add an attribute to an HTML element into that HTML tag? It absolutely is. Um, but that's also a little bit unusual. So you are perfectly, incomparably correct. Uh, but these days, we almost always do it with two separate files, just sort of a, a separation of concerns. Hey, the VS Code stream lives right here. Oof. <laughs> Actually, it's probably easier to get out of the chat, isn't it? Um, and that's just showing you us making two separate files, because I really, really want to drill this down. So the big things I want to try and sell you uh, for free our HTML is all rectangles. CSS is rules of style. Um, you sort of set these rules in a separate talk. And that when you're creating websites, all of these things are separate files that live either in a folder on your computer or in a folder on a server somewhere. So we've got styles.css. Give me, oh, heck, we've got all of them open at the same time. Can we see, okay, is this too much? It feels like too much. So we've created a separate CSS styles for you and switch the editor. We could tab between these. This is busy. This is busy, busy. Start by rewriting the styles we've created in the style CSS file. Make sure to exclude the opening and closing style tags. So we're actually going to cheat. It says to rewrite the styles we've created, but I'm going to get, I'm going to cut with control X or command X. I'm going to paste with command uh, uh, V or, or control V. And I've got, it's not, it's not aligned very pretty, but, but it said rewrite these or copy and paste these. And here it says, make sure to exclude, take away these opening and closing style tags. Cause these are 
HTML. And we don't need HTML in our CSS. Just fixing the alignment just to, to make my life easier. Uh, you, you could have this on the back line. You could have it on the next line. I like having it on the next line just, just to make it easy for me to see. We're going to align our code. That worked just fine. It says that worked just fine. But let, oof, yeah, whoop, whoop. But none of this is centered. Some of you, I recommend some names from a former boot camp. And I recommend, rec recommend, I recommend them as well. They're loves. And I recognize some of you from, from being deadly serious programmers. Can you, or my, my, my beloved brand new learners, can y'all guess why these styles in our brand new styles file aren't being applied yet? I'm going to, whoop, there's a lot going on while we move on to the next one. Oh, no, don't reset. Don't reset. I want the other one. Submit and go to next challenge. Ha <laughs> ha. Learner, look at you. It linked. So right now, these are two separate files in our tutorial environment, or they could be two separate files in a folder on your computer or two separate files on a server somewhere. But right now, the HTML file doesn't know anything about the CSS file. They're not friends. And we want to make sure they're friends. We want to know that index knows how to call style.css. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove the style element and all this. We already did this. And I bet the next thing we're going to do is find a way to let them know about each other. So we took out that inline CSS. We check our code. Cool, 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 cool. Now we're going to create a link element inside our head tag. So it's going to be a child of this parent. And I like to put it, you could put it under the title. I like to have the, the meta stuff be the first. And I think that might be best practices. It might just be me being fussy. Here we're going to make a link element. We're going to do a rel. Hmm. And our rel, and it has a ref. And I bet money that you learned yesterday with Ramon that links are the foundational underpinning of the web. So in our guest session yesterday, if I could ask for the link, please, um, we had Bruce come and talk to us about Sir Tim Berners-Lee, who invented the web. And what he really wanted to do at the time was find a way to link digital documents together. So links are so important. A ref is, an, yeah, it's where we throw a link from one thing to another. So the rel, our attribute is style sheet. And here what we're saying is, hey, hey, hey browser, I want to link you to a resource. The type of a resource is a style sheet. And here's where it is. The ref is styles.css. Do you know, by default, I just pushed Command S, just because I have absolutely programmed my my brain to, okay, I've ad I've added this, and you see, as soon as that link was completed, we saw that jump because as soon as your HTML knows about your CSS file, it says, "Fabulous! Look at all these styles rules. I will immediately apply them." Thank you so much. Let's oh heck heck heck, I'm pushing the wrong thing. Styles.css. Now that that link is typed correctly, everything's easy. I mean, all of this is conceptually very hard and weird, but in a way that can't hurt us. So we're going to be so mean to you about so many things as we learn. Ooh, ooh, catfish, I love this. So, hey, when we're talking about the rel, let's go get it. Can we say anything for that rel attribute, HTML attribute rel, or does it only have to be a specific thing? So I'm going to actually model the kind of behavior. Sorry, we're just going to go really fast. So I'm going to search up in my top search bar. I'm going to search for rel mdn and duck.go because I'm a duck.go photo. And here I've got the HTML attribute yeah, rel, and it says, hey, the question we've got from subcatfish is, can I write whatever I want in rel? Or they're predetermined values I should be putting in. And it says, do you know what? 
da, da, da. it looks like existing row value page. Okay, so here we can link to the values. Ha ha, here are the values we can have. Alternate, style sheet, ref lang. Ooh. Oh, that means there's a, a, a document translation, a type attribute. So we do have a bunch of different things we could put in here, but I don't think you can write whatever you want. You can't say, I mean, you could, it just won't work, but you probably shouldn't say rel equals butterfly. Um, for reasons that uh, that Bruce talked about yesterday, that we can't just make up new values for anything we want, even though it would be cool. So we're going to be mean to you about a bunch of things during this boot camp. And one of them is accessibility. And one of them is about responsiveness, making sure that things look the same on a website and on, or uh, on a computer and on a, a mobile. So this meta name viewport, content equals device width, Initial scale equals 1.0. So this meta is saying, hey, this is content that applies to the, the meaning of this. Yeah. Oh, we'll get that. Somebody's asking for the calendar. We'll get that. And I think we've got a couple problems with the calendar. We're actually debugging right now. So we'll get the calendar link to you. And if it, it's a bit rubbish, we'll also fix it. So here we say meta. We're giving you information about this page. The type of... The name of this is where it's a viewport. And here, this is a little hard, the content. So when you deliver the content of this page, make sure you make it as wide. So width is as wide as the device width. So if you're on a little tiny phone, it says, hey, make the content as wide as you can on that phone. So if you're on a great big computer, make it as wide as that computer. But then as you make it wide, make sure that the scale is 1.0, that you don't like stretch it out super wide and deform it. So it says to add the following, we're going to be lazy and we're going to copy and paste it. And we're going to put it, let's put it right under the UTF. Oh, that works. Everything's fine. So the text is centered again. So the link is working. Let's add another style. And note we're here in our CSS file. We're going to add a background color. Oh, heck, heck, heck. Background color. Copy. You think this is going to work? Oh, it's not going to work at all. Because right now, this is a CSS property. And I'm putting it where the target goes, where we're putting the... So what we need to be targeting instead is remember when we talked whoop 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 too busy too busy remember when we talked about these imaginary boxes so the the body is a box we're going to target the body target the body sounds like we're going to beat it up but and i'm going to do a little weird thing to show you that it's working so our body we're going to say i'm going to set up background color property is we use those those two dots the colon is brown and as soon as I as soon as I finish the word brown <laughs> and then that semicolon the semicolon says hey I'm done with what's going on right here and if you wanted to test and see how this feels you could set different background colors for the sections and the background color and I think you'll probably not see much change because those sections are imaginary boxes that are empty right now but we'll get there I bet so that brown is too brown. That is too much brown. We're going to set it to burly wood. And you say, Jess, do I have to remember all of these color names? And I say, babe, no, there are so many very stressful ways to do color. We will definitely learn in detail all of the different color ways. We're going to check our code. Everything's fine. <gasps> Boxes, boxes, boxes. So we've been talking about these, these structural elements, these some often semantic elements as imaginary boxes. Div elements are, so a section carries a lot of semantic meaning. It lets you know what kind of box this is. Div, div is our least semantic, our least smart uh, element. That's just a box. Unless you had a class or unless you had a label, 
it's hard to, to add extra content, but it's used mainly for design. Good developers use it mainly for design. I see a lot of people just using divs all over the place. So we're going to add a div inside our body element and then move all of our other elements inside the div. So even the main, I don't like the main being in a div. Hmm. Let's see if it means even main because we've got tests running. What we've done, let's just see. So what we've done is we have come into the body on the top and come into the body on the bottom just to open and close these on the same level of the same parent. Let's check our code. It wanted main to be inside the div. Okay, I trust you. So the goal is now to make sure the div doesn't take up all the room. So we're gonna we're gonna target that div again. Sounds like we're we're being mean. Div, and we could we could put this where we want. We could put it on the top. We could put it on the bottom. Right now, it sort of doesn't matter. We're gonna set the width of the div inside our curly babies. Um, oh wait, <laughs> it's been a long day. We've already got our curly babies. We need our colon. I'm going to set that to 300 pixels. You might be asking, oh no, Jess, what's a pixel? Oh, hmm. Oh, and you may notice that this broke our centering because I accidentally have two closing braces. We have an extra curly baby, which can throw everything off. <laughs> Mitch makes a great point. Look, there are 140 named, and I think named is important here, HTML colors. You don't have to learn them right? So we've got, and that hasn't, <laughs> Ramon being a sweetie, he's like 140 friends. If I had 140 friends, I would not know all of y'all's names. So do not worry about it. And this didn't really do anything because we've got the width set in our imaginary box. We're going to hustle along. Comments. Did y'all learn some comments in HTML yesterday? Maybe. So we're going to come to our style sheet and we're going to comment out our background. Colors are great for leaving yourself a little note for later, but they're also great for saying, hey, I don't want to delete this, but I do want to get rid of it for now. The background color, that code still exists. We just said, hey, I'm going to comment it out. I'm going to say, don't, don't, this is a note for me for later. Hey, that's working just fine. Everything's just fine. Now we can use the existing div selector. And that this is very technical language. We say, hey, this selector you made right here, it already exists. Now I want you to set the background color of this. The absolute strength is taking me to not write color with a U. I'm very American myself, but since I've lit, what did you? I sent to zero and we got black. Um, which is a very good preview for the other incredibly cursed ways we're going to learn to do color. Do burly wood again. Ooh, ooh, ooh. What? Ah, <laughs> uh, Ramon makes the cutest point. Cursed is in hexing, like a witch's spell, because it's going to feel like a witch's spell when we learn them. I'm going to let y'all explain why... So when we had background color, burly with the whole thing, but now when I said only this div, only this imaginary box that holds our content is brown, why is it only a little burly wood box? I'm going to let y'all explain while I move on just to make sure we cover some of the hard stuff. Now it's easy to see the text is centered within the div element and that's important. It's not centered on the larger page. And right now, the width of the development is centered, in, is set in pixels. And there's a bunch of different ways to set a size. You could set it with a relative um, type of way. Oh, Maxine, you are a gift. And you said, well, you know, right now it's applying those styles rules, but the div is only as big as the content long and it's only as big as the width we've specified wide you are absolutely correct to say you know what it's only applying those css rules to the as big as the box that contains our content so we'll talk more and more about relative and absolute values for for measuring on your page but right now it's set to 300 pixels and that means if i grab this and move it 
this is still the same size, even as I change the viewport. Oh, and even if it gets smaller, it just doesn't show us the whole thing. We're going to change the width of the, the element to, to be 80% of its parent. This is hard. Hang on, hang on. The first thing I want to do, oof, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to make you small again. Sorry, sorry Camper Cafe. Is I want to find its parent. So the parent of this div, we're going to find, oh, we've got the div. And its parent is the body. So uh, like a Greek myth about eating your children, <laughs> um, you can always imagine, if that's gruesome, I find the gruesome ones easy to remember. You can always remember that children elements live inside their parents. So the body is the parent of the div. The main is the, uh, the div is the parent of the main. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Or the, we could do it backwards. The main is the child of the div, who's the child of the body. So that's weird. But we know that when we set it to 80% of the size of the parent, it's going to set it to 80% of the size of the body. Okay, okay. Which is pretty much the whole thing. Goodbye, HTML. You've been helpful. And what we're going to do is going to take this pixel away. Let's actually look at this a little bit better. Whoop. And we're going to set the width to, and right now it's not set to anything, but we're going to set it to 80%. <gasps> and now this is much more responsive. So when I make this bigger, it still takes up, leaves that little 20% of white space. It's still going to gonna go ahead and hold steady with always giving us 80%. We go to the next challenge. So, hey, this div looks okay, but we want to center it horizontally. Okay, and we could do this by setting, we could set a margin on the left, we could set a margin on the right, but we're gonna set either of those to auto. And auto for these properties is a shortcut for, hey, please center this. Please center this conceptual rectangle. If I ever start my own vaporwave band, I do promise to name it conceptual rectangle. So we're gonna set, do we want margin left, margin right? Mar margin, margin right. And I'm going to add my, my semicolon while I'm thinking, just to, to, to set to auto. Oh. Did I spell margin right? Div. Set it with margin. Are you centered horizontally? You don't feel like you're centered horizontally. Using these two margin properties, center the div element within the pro. No, that's not right at all. Oh, I should set the margin left. Oh, setting margin left and margin right. I'm saying either. And do you know what? I'm going to use this opportunity to uh, introduce the fact. Ah, and that automatically worked. That's Look at y'all. Just like, Jess, do you want to do it right? <laughs> yeah. It is so easy to make tiny, goofy mistakes. And as much as I want to sell you on conceptual rectangles and accessibility, which we'll learn about in detail, I also want to sell you on mistakes are not that big a deal. It's just web development. It can't hurt you. So we've been using type selectors so far. So we say all of the H1s, there should only be a one H1, all of the P elements, all of the divs. But it's kind of rare that you want to set the same style rules for everyone. So one thing we could do is create a class. Cesium is completely right to say, hey, when I set, when we set, when I set, I was trying to blame y'all too. When I set margin right auto, what it did was say, pull the margin over to the right automatically. <laughs> and some catfish, I, I hate to put you on the screen for, for fessing up that things were hard. We say, and this is such a big one. When you forget a semicolon somewhere and you have to spend all day looking for it. <sighs> Oh, that, that's a uh, that's an empathy, a sympathy wins. So we're going to create classes now. And a class is very cool because this is a club. And I say, I'm going to make a club and I'm going to give out all these club membership cards. And anyone who has a club membership card, I want them to follow the style rules of my club. So I'm going to change the div selector into a class selector by creating a class named menu. And we're doing a type selector, a type of element, type selector, type of element, 
type selector, type of element. You don't have to type anything extra for your type selector. A type selector is for a type of element. You don't have to type any extra CSS. But a class selector, you need a full stop. You need to stop and recognize this class. Yeah. So you need a full stop before the class name. And this class name is menu. Think about this as you're still, you, it's still a club. It's still a club with select members. Not everybody's going to be in it. And they need to have a membership card. So this stop you put is you stopping to say, so I want to stop and check for your club membership card. And when we said, hey, I want to apply this to all of the members of the menu class, the menu club, it's not brown anymore. Huh. None of these style rules inside our menu class selector work anymore. And I'm, I'm going to let you guess why. Some of you already know. But that's, and, and we're going to stay with the, the club analogy. Because right now I said, all of the members of the menu club follow these style rules. And nobody's following these style rules. This is just letting us know, hey, if you've got the cash, don't you donate if you don't have the cash. It's super nice to donate. So the reason that we don't have any of these club members following the style rules is we haven't given anybody a club membership card yet. We haven't applied the class of menu to any elements yet. Whoop. The class is going to be equal. We're going to set that to menu. And immediately, right away, we're seeing this div says, oh my gosh, am I in the menu club? I'm so honored. I'm going to go ahead. Do you know what? Club is an extra layer of abstraction. Class is right here. We could think about this as a classroom. And I will for future boot camps. I'm sorry. So say, hey, here's your student card. You're in the class. or You're in the menu class. Here are the style rules you need to know to come to class. That worked. Everything's fine. Now the body type selector, we're going to add a background image. Okay, but right now it's commented out. So we're going to get rid of those comments. And the first thing it's going to do is it says, ha ha, I'm going to turn it all Burleywood because I've, I've taken away the ignore this comment. And we're going to change it. This isn't a background color anymore. I bet this is going to break things. It's a background image. And this is wild because a background image expects a URL. It expects a, an address for where your image lives online. But I say, hey, go to this address, Burleywood. That's not a real address. We're going to delete that. Oh, heck, heck, heck. <laughs> and we're going to set the URL. I get some smooth babies here, some smooth braces. I set it to this already existing you image. And when you find an image online and link to it in your website, that's called hot linking. And outside of a tutorial environment, you should never, 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 never do it. And I'm going to let you brainstorm reasons. It might be a bad idea to use somebody else's image on your website to check our code. Everything's fine. Nothing's going to hurt us. So we're going to add some menu items. So under our H2, we're in an article. An article is another way to make a, make a box, make an imaginary box. But this one has more meaning. This A div is just a div. A div is just an empty box. An article says, here's a box, but it's going to have something that feels like an article in it. Is that it? That's it. Platypus makes a really good point. You shouldn't link to somebody else's images on your website because it costs them money to host them. You don't want to, it kind of feels like stealing. I bet there's some super good reasons too. Um, one of my favorite is an embarrassing one. So if I'm the website owner and I'm hosting this coffee beans picture and I see a bunch of other people linking to it, I could put any image I want up with the exact same file name um, and then everybody who's linked to it would have whatever that new image is. It could be very embarrassing. Oh, we're going to have two P elements. And I always like to do the structure first. Uh, 
I was like to do the structure first because I always do the structure wrong. But look at that. Ramon makes a really good point. They could change that coffee picture to one of tea. I, I would definitely change it to something even ruder. Uh, but so far as the boot camp is concerned, tea it is. So we're going to add French vanilla. And I think this three is probably a, a price. Yeah. Let me check our code. Everything continues to be fine. Nothing's wrong. So we're going to go ahead and make more P elements. And we're going to create one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Wait, hang on. Hmm. So we need more article elements because each article will contain two P elements. Okay, okay, okay. I got this. We got this. So this is some of those conceptual semantic structures we're thinking about. Each article will contain a item and a price. We can do this. So we've got one, two, three, four. We're going to make four more articles. And I'm going to make this a little bit taller if it's not a bother. Yeah, does that work? It, it feels like it sort of works. Um, so we've got this extra article here. What I'm going to do is we want four of them, and I am shamelessly lazy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to a new line. I'm going to do paste one, two, three, four. And all of our indentation got a little messy, but that's fine. That can't hurt us. I mean, it's, it's web development. Nothing could hurt us. So we've got four articles and what, oh, do you know what? I'm not going to do it like that. I'm going to be even lazier. We want two P elements inside each article, right? Oh, maximum lazy. Does anybody already know this? Does um, free code camp auto format anywhere? That's a bit of a shame. So now I've got one of these. I need four of them. Let's go ahead and paste one two, three, four. And our indentation got messy as anything. So I'm just going to fuss and fix it. And the reason I'm fussing and fixing it is for human readability. This makes it easier for me to read. I hope it makes it easier for you to read. I'm just going to tab over these P because they're the child. Y'all, did I do this wrong? Look at me. Okay. So I have reversed my opening and closing tags. And this is just a nice meditative little tiny mistake. It can't hurt us. Programming can't hurt us. But I just want to make sure that all of these parent articles are starting with an opening tag. Um, oh, CCM says, hey, 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 do we have a format option if we right click on the editor? Let me. Sorry, that's my my little cat son screaming, and he's screaming for no reason. So we right click. Oh, oh look at that right click format doc. Look at that. You are saving me from myself. So we've got all of these, and what we're going to do is going to say caramel macchiato three seventy five. And these could be any kind of money you're comfortable with. These could be. Uh, pounds, if like me, you're in the UK, these could, you know what, 375 is a little bit expensive. 350 for a pumpkin spice. Probably can't be a yen. You, there's a closing article missing between 20 and 21. Ah ha ha. Oh God, it's just missing, missing. Look at this. Y'all are, again, out saving me for myself. Let's reformat that got caramel macchiato, hazelnut for four, and then mocha for 450. Hmm. Did I copy and paste way too many of these? Seems like something I would do. Oh, heck, heck, heck. I pasted one extra of these. We're gonna check our code. Between, beyond all odds, this is just fine. 
So right now, the flavors and prices are, are currently stacked on top of each other, right? In kind of a messy way. We're going to put them in classes. Yeah. So here we're going to create a class name. And it's not going to style anything because right now there's no style rules for these class. The class is equal to flavor. Hey, that's just fine. And aha, so flavor. <gasps> You're right. If it's a class, we have to stop and check that you belong in this class. And the flavor class needs a text a line property. I set that to left. Wait. Boop. <laughs> we still want our closing, our closing semicolons. And here I'm saying, hey, anything with a flavor class, any anybody who belongs to the flavor class, go ahead and align them to left, please. That's just fine. So we've got that on the left, and now we want our prices on the right. So here we're going to make a new class, a new little club. And this is going to be set to price. It hasn't moved it to the right yet. I uh -huh. And here's what I love about Free Code Camp is it gets a little bit harder each time. Where it, Last time it says, use the text aligned left to it. And now it says, mm -mm, you've done this before. I want you to align the text to the right. So, okay. We know that. The, oh, was it uh, price class? The price class starts the full stop. We've got our curly babies and we just did text align. I think text align might work. And I think we, maybe can we text align right? We could text align right. Everything's fine. So this is okay, but it's kind of janky that they're on different lines. When we talk about rectangles, we could also talk about lines. So everything in Everything in HTML is made of rectangles, but those rectangles will naturally fall into lines. And to make it easier, we're thinking about them as blocks here, block level. So P elements take up the entire line. They block off that entire line of their parent element. So what we're going to do is we're going to, so there are block level and inline. Block level elements take up a whole line by themselves. They're very selfish. They block anybody else from coming to sit next to them. Whereas inline says, oh, you can you can sit next to me. It's fine. What we're going to do is we're P elements by default are block level. We're going to override that. We're going to say, hey, the default for CSS is that you're a block element, but we're going to say we know best. So we're going to create a class attribute for all of our P elements with the value of item, hmm, no, 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 wait, hang on, sum of the P elements. So we're gonna add a class attribute with the value of item to our first article element under the coffee heading. Okay, so these articles, we're gonna add a class here. And this class is saying, hey, do you know what? Everything in each of these articles is one item, okay? Fine, everything's fine. I don't mean to sound so surprised when everything is fine. So the P elements are nested in an article element. Ooh, ooh. So this is going to be a little bit hard and weird. So we're going to say, I don't want to set all of the P elements. I want to set all of the P elements that are children of a item class. This is so hard. This is so weird. So here, if I just said item and gave you the curly braces, I would apply these style rules to every item class. But I don't want to tell the item what to do. I want to tell the P elements that are the children of this what to do. And here I can say item and then no comma. P, and this says, I want to set style rules for all of the P elements that are children of the item. You say, what? I say, it'll make more sense the more times you use it. So a lot of these things, we say item, I want to select, this is a rule for people in this class. This is only a rule for the children P elements in this class. Ooh, ooh it's already doing weird things. And I want to set the inline 
block. Heck, heck, heck. The inline block property. I want to set that to, oh, wait. I want to set the display. That makes more sense. Property to inline block. Oh, yes, yes. And here what we've said is, hey, all of the P children of the item parent class, I want to change the rules by which you display things. I want you to put these blocks, these conceptual rectangles, next to each other in line, please. Check our code, and it says fabulous, pristine, perfect. That little green line is immensely rewarding, isn't it? Um, I think Ramon does a, a pat pat when stuff goes okay. And how life affirming. So we're going to hustle a little bit. We'll maybe go a little bit over an hour today. I hope you all don't mind. So inline block didn't stay over to the right. That's because inline block elements only take up the width of their content. Let's spread them out. So we're going to add a width property to both the flavor and price class that's 50% each. So we're going to say, hey, the flavor content and hey, the price, the content with the class of flavor and the content with the class of price, I want you to both take up 50% of your available space, of your space within your parent. So that width again. And then our curly babies. Oh, wait, it's not. We're already within our curly babies. With colon, obviously. Obviously. Uh, 50%. Okay, so now we, we see that we see the flavor taking up 50% of the space it could. I also want this one taking about 50%. What? This doesn't seem right. With this 50%. That's right. That feels like it broke something new. Okay. <laughs> okay. See, so that didn't work. Mitch is like, no, no, no. It's right that it's wrong. And that didn't work because styling the elements is an inline block and then putting them in separate lines of code gives us that extra space. Okay. Which the extra space means that 50 plus 50 is 100. 100 plus a space puts it on an extra line. Well, that, that, would have been useful to know, teaching us silly things, teaching us useful silly things. We changed each one to 49 to make space for that. Oh, we had to make space for the space, and that was okay. So that worked, but there's still a little space to the right of the price. So we could keep wiggling the percentages, or we could move the P element. Oh, so this is actually an, an issue in our HTML and says, hey, because these are on separate lines, what we could do is put them, I'm going to, I'm going to squish you over. Where are, who am I? We're going to put these PLNs on the same line. Uh -huh. And that, oh, it's a little squished, but that looks a lot nicer, doesn't it? Oh. Everything's fine. So now we can put these both back at 50%. So we said, hey, we wanted to treat these HTML elements as though they belonged online. We got to put them on the same line then. I'm going to set this back to 50. Code. Amazing. We're going to keep bopping along. So now we can change the remaining article and P elements to match the first set. We're going to add the class of item to all of the other. We're going to copy and paste this. Yeah. Vex is way ahead of us. Vex is saying, you know what? We've got to add these classes to all of the other students that we want to follow the rules. You are perfect and complete. Article, we're going to get class is equal to item. And because I am the laziest teacher who ever lived, I'm going to copy this. 
and I'm going to come into the next article tag and paste it. If you were using VS Code or other modern text editors, you could do this automatically. You could select them all and do this. Um, and we'll, we'll learn the advanced stuff later. Hmm. Okay. That passes. Ah, it didn't quite work because position the other P elements to be on the same line with no spaces between them. Okay, so we're just doing what we did last time. Nothing is scary. Oof, that looks a little messy, doesn't it? So I'm just going to erase this. And it is going to look super messy. And it just looks super messy because I haven't done the formatting yet. So I'm going to do this. And then format document. And thank you so much, Cesium. And if I recall correctly, Cesium, so I'm always picking on Cesium because Cesium is helping out as an associate instructor. Isn't that lovely of them? Um, article class, article class. Oh, those are all done. Oh, wait, no, those are not all done. I wasn't adding the class. I was making them all in the same line. So really, formatting is getting us in trouble this time. Who's not on the same line? I should not have any spaces between my P elements. I don't think I do. No space. No space. Is there another flavor? There's another, if I scroll down. Is there somebody saying there's another flavor? Scroll up. Oh, this one we already did. Mm, that's cheating, isn't it? Y'all were infinitely helpful. So we now have to apply the same styling to the flavor. Okay. Add the applicable class names. We could do this. So class item. Oh, we've got to add a class of flavor. I'm going to do this. I'm going to copy you. And I'm going to attach you to all of the other flavors and hopefully not forget any this time. Is there still one up at the top? <laughs> nice try, French vanilla. You've already got them. And I'm also going to add the class of price to all the prices. And that's here in the P tag. And you worked really cool. Is I could put it after the P? That's kind of conventional. Do you think I could put it in front of the P? Let's see if it works. Ooh, ooh that's in the wrong place. Oh, I accidentally deleted the P. Wait, I accidentally deleted the... Hmm. Should I have five flavor elements? <sighs> flavor. <laughs> and this does feel really repetitive, but this is 100% the type of goofy mistakes you're going to make all the time. Or at least this is 100% the kind of goofy mistakes I make all the time. I do have five flavor elements. One, two, three, four, five. We're going to, we're going to format you. Don't give up. Don't give up. I might give up. This P has a flavor element for caramel macchiato. This P has a flavor element for pumpkin spice. This is a P flavor element for hazelnut. 
This is a flavor element for mocha. Hmm. Have I spelled flavor wrong? Is that it? That would be very embarrassing. No. All right, y'all. Can y'all give me a little tiny hint if you see it? P class flip. Y'all, y'all. I should have five price elements. Price, class. Oh, so we can't indeed declare the class before. A whole heckin' long time. So, if the I would make the width of the page preview smaller. Ah, squish. Ah, oh, they're gonna overlap. That's oh heck. <laughs> so if we make them too small, they'll overlap. Oh, see, <laughs> he points out that this is pat pat. If you've been a bit annoyed, um, I really like this because that sort of uh, like increases the the little serotonin reward pathway, doesn't it? Uh, so we're going to, we, so right now they're set to take up 50, 50, but we know these prices are not as big as the flavors. So we're going to go ahead and do 75. We're going to give way more space to these flavors and just 25 to the width. Okay. So we're going to come back to styling, but we're going to add a second section. So we're going to do some more HTML stuff. And it said a second section. We're going to come all the way down to the bottom to where this section ends. It's our new section. And anytime we start one, we've got to, yes, we've got to end one. Let's format our document because I love that trick now. Let's check our code. Oh, you know what? Let's try and get to about 50% if we can. Oh, heck. I've got a call in about a little less than an hour. So we won't go super, super long. All right. You know what we're going to do is we're actually going to skip a lot of these. So this is going to feel a lot like what we've already done. And I'm going to cheat. You all can't. I mean, you can cheat. I'm not the boss of you. But I'm going to skip a lot of this structure. So this is going to be, hey, do this again. Come in, maybe 60. <sighs> okay, 60 was a little bit far. Step 55. Hmm. Okay. We're just 52. Skip the HTML stuff. Step 53. So what we're doing here, this part I'm skipping is, and you still have to do it, uh, is where we're, we're creating all of the prices for desserts like we just did for drinks. And we've just done it. So I want to go ahead and do some of the stuff that's new with you, just because this might be a little harder. We're going to give our menu some space between the content and the sides with padding properties. And think about padding as Mitch, you're after my own heart. You were like, skip to 53. <laughs> padding is like wrapping something in bubble wrap before you put it in a box. It's the extra space on the inside. So we're going to give our menu class a padding left property, Ooh, left, and a padding right property. We're, gonna, we're not going to forget our semicolons, that, that, little, that little red thing says you've got. Um, and we're going to set them both to 20 pixels. So this is an absolute value. A pixel is always the same size. Oh, look at that. As soon as I said padding right, the right side was like, oh, I'm going to spread out. I've got a little bit of space. And then I think on the left, as soon as I paste this in, boop, we've got that extra padding, that extra little bubble wrap to, to keep it safe. That feels very cool. So let's add a, So now we've got that, that great room on the side. Let's add that at the top as well. What do you think we can do? So it's not telling us the syntax, but I think we can guess. I think we did padding right and padding left. I think I can say padding top. Oh, that worked just fine. Oh, heck, heck, heck. One thing I love about teaching is 
um, every time I'm teaching a boot camp, my friends say my my language day to day gets much more polite because I've got to be like, oh heck, or oh no, uh, and say it instead of saying what's truly in my heart, uh, which is oh heck and oh no, but louder and meaner. So okay, they've got the all of these have twenty pixels. They all have the same. And what this is saying is, you know what? This is a little bit repetitive. We've got one thing. Instead of left, right, top, bottom, we could just say padding and set that to 20 pixels. And you say that, oh, and away when I took, deleted them. And when I put it back, it went just back to where we wanted to go. Everything's fine. Again, if you've got the money, it's great to donate. But don't you spend money? Sorry, I do this on a fresh account so that I can sh like, hey, you could donate but also don't want you spending money you don't have. So the current width of the menu is always 80% of its parent element, the body. And on a very wide, wide screen, look at look how far away those are. That's a bit hard to read. So what we want to, oh, heck, heck, heck. What we want to do is we want to set a max width property to the menu class. And this says you can never get wider than 500 pixels. So menu, I set max width set that to 500 pixels and this means it can go smaller than 500 pixels but it can't go wider is that true the menu class hmm did that work you're saying that worked so, oh so we're gonna start changing the fonts so all of the text in our body we're going to add, and we'll do more about fonts later. I promise it's so hard. Font family. And we're going to set these all to a sans serif font. And this is, this is just a font that should be pretty readable. Font family. Sans. There we go. Serif side the little wiggly ends of on letters or characters. And here we've said, give me a font that doesn't have those little fancy wiggly bits. And I've done a classic mistake by leaving off a letter. Who doesn't love a typo? So, okay, well, you know, all of these have the same font. That's a little boring. But we can send Serif just the... We could leave... Um, Everything sans serif, but style both the H1 using the selector. Remember, we're selecting all the H1s, and we're selecting all the H2s at the same time. I think we need a comma for that. We just learned we did. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to say the font in here is going to be impact. Oh, dang. Impact does indeed have a lot of impact. It's a very punchy font. Amazing. Let's check our code. Everything's fine. So, and this is a super, super long session today. So unfortunately, we're probably going to get to about maybe, maybe, maybe a couple more. And then I'm going to uh, cruelly abandon you. So here we can create a fallback value the same way that alt text is a fallback value for your image not just a fallback value, but it is. So if your image doesn't load, your alt text will still tell the viewer what the image is. Here, we're gonna set a backup. So if my my browser goes to get impact and can't find it, our fallback font is impact. I think, do we just say, it didn't tell us how to do this, so I guessed. But what we could do is go to DuckDuckGo and search for how do I, uh, whenever you don't know how to do something, the rules are, your options are, you can ask somebody for help. I love that. It's good. Uh, can I get a Discord link up? Because there's the Discord and the forum. We've got a forum as well. So you can go to the Discord or forum and ask for help. You could look it up. I really like MDN. Or my favorite thing is to just try it. Just get weird. So, oh, Mitch has got a good question. I'll answer that in just a second. I'm so sorry. Getting 
bring up the documentation to answer that. We're going to italicize this. And I know y'all did this yesterday. <laughs> All right. Some of you are saying you've been asking chat GPT a lot for, but I promise you the thing about a, and I will say this as somebody who works on, on, on a data set for AI, the thing about stuff like ChatGPT is if it doesn't know the answer, it's just going to make something up that sounds very, very plausible. Um, so we're going to, so established, so we're going to set a class selector. Oh, we're going to create an established class first. Okay, we can do that. So we're in our CSS. We're going to create a class selector for established Really, babies. Um, we set our font style to italic. And you might be thinking, no, 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 Jess, no, no, no. Yesterday with Ramon, we learned that this is M, and it is totally M for emphasis when you're HTML M. If you uh, fonts in CSS, it's italic, and M carries a little bit more. Um, semantic meaning. So folks using additional uh, assistive technology will know that there's emphasis on that, whereas the italic is just pretty decoration. That hasn't done anything because we haven't added, we haven't put anybody in our class yet. Our class is equal to, watch me type establish right the first try. And as soon as we do that, we said just a little tiny whoop. Just a little decoration. So we're going to add two new type selectors, H1 and H2, and we're both going to set them to different sizes. We get some default sizing for H1 and H2, but I want to say, hey, do you know what? The font size here, I want to set that to 40 pixels for H1. And this is great because this really proves you. I'd never... It, I'm not the boss of you, but please don't use H1s or H2s for styling. Say, oh, I need this really big. I'll use an H1 because you've got the power to do this. And, and that really robs you of the semantic meaning of an H1 or an H2. At 30 pixels. Amazing. We check our code. Let's just do a couple more of these. It's been ages. And I want, I want to be mean because I want you to do some of these on your own as well. So we're going to make a footer element. Is it, is it in our main? Where are you? Below the main element, add a footer. Okay, and that makes sense. We're gonna check our code, nothing is wrong. Within that, we're gonna create a, a P element. And within that, we're gonna nest a link. The displayed text, the anchor text, is visit our website, and it's going to link to freecodecamp.org. Let's do one more, and then I will abandon you to the wall. Why does that not work? Inside the footer. Oh, oh, heck. I did not close my link, my anchor element. That's a very good reason for that to not pass. Let's do one or two more and then I'm gonna escape. Oh, this is a nice, easy one. We're gonna make another P tag right under that. I say, this is a nice, easy one. Like I didn't just mess it up last time. I'm gonna say, hey, let's add this. And do you know what? As cruel as it is, I might leave you on this nice, easy step. L let's see how far we got. Uh, and we didn't do these HTML ones because they're just like the ones up here. But, oh no, it looks like you're going to have to do like almost 30 of these by yourself. The cruelty, the inhumanity. Uh, but getting used to... so I. Like if we did all of them together, it wouldn't be very fair. So this will be a little bit hard and it will be a little bit weird. And I'm sorry, but, oh, here's Ramon making a good point. 
you don't have to finish these tonight. So we're going to keep going tomorrow and Friday. But if you need to come back and watch these videos later, if you want to come back and ask for help about these early ones in the Discord or in the forum later, that's okay. It's not going to hurt you. Could I grab the forum link and the uh, Discord sign up link to chat, please? Everything's easy. I had one question. And if anybody else has any other questions, please, please do let me know. We'll just do a quick question to answer. Everything is fine. So Mitch is saying, hey, even if the, we're using a really specific font and not a family of fonts, and let's talk about this a second. So a, a family of fonts would be a type of font, like, hey, give me fonts with a serif or no serif, or give me a bold font, or bold is a separate thing, um, and not a font family. This is a really good question, and I'm going to answer this by cheating, by looking it up. And I'm going to say, I want to see the font family in CSS. MDN is going to come up. Okay, so this does. It says font family name. So it does like Georgia is the name of a font, and here's a backup of a serif. So it looks like these are specific fonts. What is... Do we think there might be a font property as well? Search for font CSS. Oh, dang, we've got a font one as well. Oh, so this gives us a little bit more flexibility. So a font family is, hey, here's the, the name of the font or the name of the font type. I want a font family. But this one, this says, hey, I if the, just using the font says, I want to set the size and the font and the fallback. So font family is just fine, but you can use font as well if you're very fussy. So I'll wait. I, I'm not going to cut you off if you do have any questions, but here's homework. <gasps> homework. And again, this homework is when you get to it. It's not right away. So if you haven't finished the H, the the, one, the session yet from yesterday, I'd recommend going through all of that first. Yeah. So your homework is see how much you can get done of the first two. But because I am a very mean teacher, um, because I'm a very mean teacher, I always give extra homework, whereas Ramon doesn't. Ramon's very sweet. So please see how much of the first and second sections you can get through. But also your homework is to be as gentle. So if, if this is in the morning for you, you have to spend the whole rest of the day being gentle and nice to yourself. If this is in the afternoon, you have to spend the whole rest of the day being gentle and kind to yourself. If you're watching this late at night, you do not get to just go to sleep and get off the hook with your homework. If you're watching this late at night, you have to spend the whole day tomorrow being as gentle and lovely to yourself as possible. Learning new stuff is so hard the least you can do is just be as laid back and chilled out with yourself as possible. We've got that great talk we got from Joe about perfectionism. I want you to kill the perfectionist in your head. Ooh, always very morbid. Uh, <laughs> or send them off on a nice little tiny vacation for the rest of the day, the rest of the afternoon, or all day tomorrow. Brutal. So we'll be in the Discord. We'll be in the forums. We're so happy to help. And we will see you tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning, we are going to be doing more CSS, but it's going to be much more artistic. I'll see you then. Ramon will see you then. And I will let you go. Goodbye, my loves.